We'd struggle to have a pint in my favourite hull boozer without hearing at least one conversation about Tommy Robinson. Last weekend, despite efforts to thwart it, thousands descended on London with one common purpose, to support him. Tommy was imprisoned in somewhat alarming speed for contempt of court and his supporters are furious. Alas, what Tommy did on this occasion was a bit silly and it seems the judge had little choice but to jail him. However, the Free Tommy movement represents way more than just this case. It represents a huge number of people who have had enough. They have had enough of the PC narrative sweeping our nation. Enough of the inability to raise concerns about is Islamism. Enough of seemingly double standards and enough of politicians going against their will. Whatever those in power may think about these people and their views, ignoring their concerns will be at their peril. Well, you describe it as um, a bit silly. I, th I think it's rather further on margins than that. But you talked about the people who came to that rally. And if you look through, it was intriguing because you had blokes and women who served in the military, some had served in Northern Ireland, military veterans, and at the same time you had Gert Wilders, who is a far-right Dutch politician whose views, I think, would probably upset most sane viewers. Mm -hmm. So it's a very broad church to, to whom he appeals. Mm -hmm. But if you come back to what he actually did, and it's interesting, isn't it, because we, we've just, I think, come up last week or so, we celebrated a group of people who openly flouted the law, broke the law, and brought about great change. I refer, of course, to the suffragettes movement, which was everything we brought. Mr Robinson has done exactly the same, but there's nothing to applaud what he's done here. This is what you have to know, because he was warned that if he did it again... And people attending a court, whether they be jurors, whether they be defendants, whether they be court workers, whatever, they are entitled to go in without being subjected to any form of video or form of abuse. And for him doing that, the cause that I see what you're getting at, and there is a valid cause, and Majid needs to come in soon because he's talked very powerfully about this, and respectfully, it probably speaks more to his background than it does mine. And it is an important conversation about what people perceive as what is going on and what's being hushed up and what is mm -hmm. too PC. You're not going to get that conversation by openly breaking the law. You're going to denigrate that conversation. But the reason, and to make it specifically about your point, there is a huge concern about the speed in which um, Tommy was arrested, charged and convicted and sent to prison. Yeah. And I mean, if you actually compare, if we talk about child abuse, and I, I'm really, really keen to bring um, Majid in on this as well. Um, but I, there, what I sense in Tommy Robinson but is this case is the tip of an iceberg. No, he had a suspended sentence hanging over I know that. from can the I, previous offence in, in Kent. Can I just before Majid yeah, sure. bigger issues? Because as a, I used to practice criminal law, this is completely standard. It happens to people of all races and all backgrounds. If they are in contempt of court, they are, and they are immediately sentenced. And, and I'm just going to bring in another barrister who talks about this, because this is nothing special about Tommy Robinson at all. There are people in prison every day for contempt of court. With Mr. Robinson, my understanding is that he'd already been warned previously at a, at a previous hearing that he'd overstepped the mark. And even with that warning and even with knowing what might happen, he, he took the risk. It seems really clear to me that something that is a standard criminal procedure has been exploited in this case to feed into a narrative mm. of people being silent. But her point is the yeah. broader conversation. Well, yes, really and, and that feeds so, into a narrative, which, but there is nothing yeah. strange about so, it. Look, I mean, yeah, to, yeah, Tommy broke the law, and I, my immediate reaction when he broke the law was that justice should be served yeah. for anyone against anyone that breaks the law. Conceding that there's a point among anti-Islam populists isn't feeding their narrative just as conceding Muslims may have a point on some of their grievance isn't feeding the jihadist narrative. And I think, as I said earlier, sometimes we do need to acknowledge things when, uh, when it's as clear as day in front of us. And there is a wider point here that I think is as clear as day. Um, and that wider point is I think all of us need to... I grew up with organised racism, far-right racism, BMP, Combat 18, and it's why I helped Tommy leave the EDL, because I didn't want to see the rise of another organised form of uh, street protest movement that picks on people like me. Um, when I helped him leave the EDL, he said he left because the neo-Nazis had infiltrated this movement. Now, part of the problem here is that if we've got up to 10 to 15,000 people rallying around one man now, I think all of us should take stock and step back and think, because no other politician in this country can gather that many people on the streets. 
So I think it is something that gives us pause to thought to consider what's going on on a wider basis here. What are, what are the concerns? Now, I, I think I know what some of the concerns are. They revolve around a lot of a perception around injustice. The grooming gangs, it took ages for them to be first acknowledged that they exist and then for justice to be brought against them. One quick them. interjection. Yep. There's a, a, a <clears> grooming <throat> gang have uh, been dealt with today and only two newspapers mm, have, have decided it. to yeah. cover yeah. it. Yeah. One, yeah. Of yeah. Which yeah. Doesn't, one of which doesn't it's even yeah. refer to their background. Indeed. The other calls of Asian. Yeah. And they're not, they're, 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 yeah. Yeah, but they're, they're not Pakistani they're, or they're Kashmir. They're Pakistani Muslim. Or Kashmir. Got to yeah. accept it's not fair. That. Now, the other thing is that, so whereas the grooming gangs took ages to acknowledge and bring to justice, Tommy was so swiftly brought to justice. That's point one. But the second point is, if you remember the terrorism legislation that stopped Lauren Southern coming, into this country. That same terrorism legislation was silent last Sunday when terrorist flags were raised in our streets, Hezbollah flags. I spoke at that rally against them uh, on behalf of the Jewish community. And I think that if the perception is allowed to continue that Muslims can raise flags with literally with machine guns on them, right, for a group that swears yeah. uh, that it wants to wipe Jews out completely yeah. and actually engages in terrorism. This uh, is the Al Quds rally. Yeah, while, while, while a Canadian white Christian alt right journalist or populist journalist, whatever we want to call her, was banned from entering the country under that same terrorism legislation. People are going to see that inconsistency yeah. and become very, very angry. I worry about the state of race relations in this country unless we address that fairly and squarely. I worry about the state of race relations in this country because when it was clear to people that Michelle was going to introduce this debate, I, my Twitter stream was immediately flooded with racists. I mean, before we'd even had the debate, yeah. they all jumped on and started racially abusing me. And that is the reality. This isn't a conversation. This is people, and I'm not saying that everybody who supports Tommy Robinson is racist, but certainly a very significant number are. This is an image from the rally. Uh, yeah, the free. The free well, I'm judging by the number of people who were racially abusing me on Twitter. This is a, um, an image from the rally where you can see, and you know, it's not so much there's someone doing Nazi salutes that I find really yeah, troubling yeah. about this. It's the fact that nobody mm -hmm. seemed to bat an eyelid. He, nobody, nobody seemed fazed by the fact that He is actually responding to the salutes. people that are shouting and calling him a Nazi, by the way. There's a counter protest that you can't see in that video, which is what he's responding to. By doing Nazi but salutes? No, he's, he's, he's been an idiot. No one would support. it's a little support. harsh to say Northern Irish veterans. Of course, he's, uh, by the I'm way, not saying, I'm, way, I'm not. assault conviction, Tommy Robinson's assault conviction was for battering a Nazi at one of his previous rallies. Yeah. I just want to make that very clear, and, Rachel. And can I, can I just finish yeah. quickly before Rachel comes? I mean, I know Tommy as well, and I've spoken to him, and he's kind of, at various times, as we all know, tried to kind of rebrand himself mm -hmm. as not racist. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, th I think that it's really important to separate a few things out. One is breaking the law. Everybody's under the rule of law. Mm -hmm. That applies yeah, to politicians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we all agree on that. So that's one thing. Um, that there are um, people who go to court need to be protected and criminal trials need to be carried out with integrity. That, there yeah. are people who have political grievances about the way that immigration is affecting the country. I really disagree, Michelle, that those people don't have a voice. I feel like our entire mainstream <laughs> political dialogue so has been hijacked by that perspective. Look at Brexit, look at how the hostile immigration, right. the hostile mm. environment, Rachel the hostile immigration to... environment that has resulted in British people being deported, that was specifically to cater Can to I these make, people. I, I, think we're totally, I think that this has become a bit confused as far as I'm concerned because are you oh, arguing so that he, the concerns he's raising are not getting a fair hearing in the media at the yeah, moment. I'll give, I'll give you a classic time, example. Go on then, I have I need, we need to hear from a media lawyer. Yeah, so for example, there is a situation where predominantly, and, and it is grooming gangs where they are raping many underage girls, thousands, in their thousands, and this has been going on for years. Yes. This, is, know this. this is predominantly perpetrated by Muslim men. Yeah. We know this. Yeah. We know this, but nobody seems to be able it, to have this conversation. It is for troubling example, that only two papers yeah. ran the yes. story Michelle is and referring. And they don't and even mention the as common Muslims. connection yeah. Yeah. of yeah. them yeah. being a Muslim. Yeah. For example, Rotherham, yeah. Rochdale, Newcastle, Telford, Aylesbury, Derby, that? Bristol, Keighley, yeah. Peterborough. But a male doesn't the usually only, put its punches on any of these things. The only reference yeah. to Muslim is the following. This is one of the defence barristers yeah, saying, in defence of one of these guys, you know, basically this guy is immature. Defending um, Assad Hussein, he pointed to his client's upbringing in the Muslim community, which he said does have a tendency to encourage clandestine relationships because he was not allowed to bring girlfriends but, home or have sex mm, before Michelle, marriage. Michelle, they are no more the practicing Muslims than I am. No, and if you get a couple of football players, hold on guys, 
girls. You get a couple of white football players who take girls to a room and they get involved. You know, they don't get called well, Christian can I, can just, football can we players, just, uh, do they? Before, very, just on that point, very quickly, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, but sure. the descriptor, I think, is relevant if it's part of the motivation for the crime. If it's not related to why the crime was committed, then of course it's not do relevant. It's, do you think Here, it's in their court testimonies, they talk about why... Is it their faith could, or the nationality? Yeah, no, 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 it's their culture, and religion is part yeah. of culture, but, right? But and we can't deny you. that. And they talk about they talk about these girls being white, and they talk about them being non-Muslims in their own defence. Before you mention this lawyer, this paper has given more information about the make and model of the van that the kid was abusing. Can we just say that, you know, you're not sitting in a newsroom having to publish a newspaper which you could be sued for contempt of court if you get it wrong. As a media, there, there is not a me deliberate media blackout in order to whitewash what is what is going That's on. That's how it feels. Potentially well, illegal. Not story, right? Well, let's let's can, he, let, can we just see what the media lawyer says? It's odd because some of the people who are, are who are supposedly in on this um, conspiracy of silence, this wall of silence, are the biggest advocates of of, of the free press and free speech. You know, I'm no fan of of certain newspapers. But they want to tell the story. They're not telling a story because they're blocked from doing so because it's important to ensure that there is a fair trial. So this just goes back to the right. first point you made, which is that everything, everyone has to act within the law. It's that standard is, for these kind of trials. I'm afraid that's the final page of this edition. We have to move on. You're watching The Pledge on Sky News. After the break, I'll be explaining that sorry maybe isn't the hardest word.